Hola, buenos, buenos tardes. Let me know how I sound, if you can hear me. Is my microphone working? Here I am at the beach in Colombia, the west coast of Colombia, in a place called Palomino, which is a famous, in Colombia, relatively famous backpacker town. It used to be a sleepy fishing village, you know the story. Then it got discovered by a bunch of dirty backpacking hippies who came here. Uh, bought and sold a whole bunch of marijuana and mushrooms and started an industry. Surfers also like it here. You can see a few people out here floating in the water. It's not a, a babe rich location or anything. It's not somewhere with like a lot of uh, beach bodied people. It's more of like a, how would you describe it? You know, it's got a lot of surfers and backpackers, but it's not like a really rich destination. More people are going to Cartagena or something like that. Not not so much here in Palomino. Hi, Joe. You're worried about the danger, huh? What part of... What scares you the most? When you think of the danger of Colombia, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Yeah, so this is Selena, and this is a very, very popular hostel brand all over Latin America. It's got amazing Wi-Fi. For Colombia, I did a speed test, and I got like 100 upload, 100 download. Unheard of speed. Really great, but it's pretty slow here at the moment. It just, just got cloudy. You've heard horror stories about guys running into the wrong girl and ending up in robberies and druggings. Yeah, I can totally talk about that in a second here, Joe. Here's some, here's some uh, beautiful women getting her picture taken. Hello. Yeah, so that happens a lot, actually. A lot of guys are getting drugged. A lot of people get mugged. But I mean, it's not a lot in the grand scheme of things. It happens a lot to guys who use Tinder. But there's some really, I did a video on this. If you look back a little while ago, it's called The Dangers of Dating in Colombia. So that might, that might help you. But just to recap, if you're going to use Tinder, you got to look for some warning signs, right? One, is she way too hot and she makes it way too easy? Like it's some girl you just met. She's already calling you poppy. She wants to come over to your house. She doesn't even want to go on a date. She just wants to come straight to your house because she loves you, right? Or if she asks for any money, like if she's like, oh, I dropped my phone or I just need like $50 to fly from my city to visit you. Any kind of warning sign like that, forget about it. Is it way too good to be true? Right. So if you're out clubbing and partying around Par Park Yaris or on La Citenta, the 70 in Medellin, use common sense. Don't be out there clubbing alone if you can help it. Be like a hot girl. You know, have, have a wingman to watch your back. Don't be leaving your drink around. Don't be accepting drinks from strangers. On that note, like I have a friend I lived with in my house and he's getting a Tinder date once a week at least and sleeping with like 90 percent of them just having sex with random girls on tinder and it took him two years before anything bad happened to him probably a hundred colombian women he slept with off tinder yeah he's a bit of a son of a bitch like that but he got robbed just two weeks ago uh so what happened was he had a girl over till about 3 a.m of course she came straight to his house no date they didn't she just came over and they started drinking he probably slept with her and he woke up at th in the morning and his his uh, phone was gone and all of his credit cards and our bank cards were gone luckily he they were empty bank accounts she didn't get his credit card but 
what she did do is when she took his phone, he had left it logged in and she logged him out of his Gmail account. Right? So she logged him out of his Gmail account because right now what the thieves are really looking for are your passwords to your cryptocurrencies. That's what they want. So if you got girls over, you should lock your shit away somewhere in a safe. I have a pack safe. It's really useful. Um, don't let them pour your drinks. If you get a drink with them, you keep an eye on your booze because that's what's going to happen. Another warning sign is like, another warning sign is she wants to meet her friend or she wants you to meet at her location. You're like, hey, I know this great cafe. And she goes, I want to go to this restaurant. That's always a red flag. You're the guy, you're setting up the date. Don't go where she wants you to go. Um, on that note, like, there's so many normal people that aren't scammers. If you're not hanging out with, like, nasty people or just banging hundreds of girls off of Tinder or hanging out where the hookers hang out, you're going to meet normal people. You just have to use a little bit of street smarts. You, If you're a gringo, Joe, and you're coming from a country where you make 10 times the money that the locals do, you're always going to be a bit of a target no matter where you are in the world. You got to be aware of it. It's kind of like being a really hot girl. Like you're a hot white girl and you walk into a Colombian bar. That value and that's kind of, that's great, right? It's really awesome to have that kind of high value. But at the same time, there's downsides because there's men that are going to be like trying to take advantage of you, trying to date rape you, weird shit like that. And that's the kind of stuff you got to think about when you're not just in Colombia, but traveling anywhere in third world countries. Yeah. But yeah, like Ram Lifer says, like, don't go to Columbia for the wrong reason. So many guys come here just to uh, sleep with prostitutes, do lots of cocaine for cheap, and just be debaucherous, right? Just be completely scumbags. And if you're a scumbag, you're going to interact with a lot of other, other scumbags who are going, who could rob you. But then again, I've got friends who are total, uh, hopefully the children aren't watching. I'm going to use some NSFW language here, but horror mongers. They like to whore. They like institution is legal in Colombia. Now, dude, once you get outside of the city, outside of the cities, you really don't need to worry about that stuff very much unless you're going to the super tourist places like where I am out here in Colombia. I'm in a small town called Palomino population like 2000. Maybe there's like a thousand tourists here. And down the whole coast, the northern coast, going from Santa Marta, there's just little villages, beautiful beaches and parks. And you don't have to worry about that stuff, like muggings, people with guns robbing you, that kind of stuff. So you don't have to stay in a city. You can go to countless like tourist locations in Colombia where you can get closer to nature, feel safer, and stuff like that. But men in Medellin, the women are like, woo, man, are they hot really attractive women if you don't know spanish though you're at a major disadvantage which i don't what else we got here yeah so muggings robberies you hear about that once in a while and it's just a fact of life like if you get robbed it's very rare it never happened to me it didn't happen to most of the people i know living here but it has happened to some people and usually it's two guys on a motorbike and they'll roll up, usually after dark, with a gun. Yo, give me your phone and your wallet. You give them your phone and your wallet, and they usually fuck off, leave you alone. But it hasn't happened to me yet. Well, dude, yeah, love hotels are very popular in Colombia. I've never used one. Um, I'm not really here to just hook up with tons of girls, though. Like, I'm more focused on fixing my career at the moment. But... Uh, I know a lot of guys like to use the love hotels because Colombians live in very, a lot of them, they live in very tight quarters. So a lot of their homes are close together and what they'll do, and they might live with their family, right? Even into their thirties or forties, you live with your family. When you get married, their family moves in with you. It's very typical. So they go to these love hotels and yeah, if you go to a love hotel, I do believe you need to leave your identification at the door and whoever you bring also needs to check in with their identification. What you want to do is like, it's always sketchy like that, but just think, how easy was it to sleep with this girl? Did you have to put in any work? What, did she play hard to get it all, or she just made it super easy for you all the way? Hi, Otto. Nice to see you, man. Yeah, Vancouver's rainy. Big surprise. <laughs> I kind of miss Vancouver sometimes. 
yeah, the smaller towns are definitely safer. Like I went to Hardeen, uh, Watape, like uh, here in Palomino. And I actually really prefer the small places. And I also like meeting women in the small places a lot more. I find it much easier, honestly, than the big cities. Because I don't really Tinder that much. I don't speak Spanish. So I'm usually dating girls I meet from other countries, not Colombia. Honestly, I'm usually going out with Germans and Swiss girls and tourists. It's kind of my thing. Uh, just because a lot of the locals don't speak English. And it's hard to trust them, honestly. Like... I'm skeptical a lot of the times of the girls. Yeah. But I mean, safety, dude, don't be a pussy. Like, fuck, I've been to Cambodia, Mexico, Guatemala. Everywhere you go, there's going to be a hint of danger. But you know what? How old are you, man? You want to live forever? Come on. Go out there, challenge yourself, go into the scary places, and survive. And when you survive, it makes you stronger. Right? You feel like, wow, I did that crazy thing. My friend Seal, he has a uh, YouTube channel called Seal on Tour. He went to, like, one of the poorest barrios in Medellin. He went way up the tram with his GoPro because he wanted to make a video like, look, it's not dangerous here. I'm in a sketchy neighborhood, and it's totally nice. <laughs> as soon as he got into this neighborhood, he noticed it was all dirt roads, like a different electricity grid, and right away he had his GoPro. People surrounded him, like teenagers saying, hey, what are you doing here in Spanish? Like, what are you doing here? Why are you filming? What are you doing? Get out of here, right? And they followed him, a big mob of them. They searched him. They were, like, trying to find out if he was from another gang or what, right? And then a guy with a gun came up, and he was dressed like a security guard with a walkie-talkie. What are you doing here? Give me that camera. Delete everything. And he thought he got robbed. And then the guy let him go. He got stopped multiple times on the way back into the city down this hill. Because these, this uh, whole neighborhood was actually controlled by gangs. And the, they were protecting their territory. They didn't know who he was, why he was filming there. Right, another guy. Uh, but in the end, he got home okay. And they didn't even rob him. They didn't take anything. They didn't take his money. They didn't take his camera. They just wanted to know why he was there. In the places you're going to stay, they're gonna be, it's going to be like in Medellin. It's going to be like Morales, Poblado. Safe places, relatively. And as long as you're not playing around with the hookers running around drunk at night by yourself, you're going to get pickpocketed. You're maybe going to get drugged if you're doing dumb shit like that, right? Use common sense. Go home at night. Why do you need to stay out till 3 a.m. all the time? If you do, stay with some friends who can watch your back. Most of these guys who get robbed are playing with uh, prostitutes, bringing prostitutes to their room, playing with Tinder girls who are, it's way too good to be true, and the girls are coming straight back to the room. They're not checking their drinks. They're not checking their food. They're just having a good time, and that happens. Yeah. Keep going. I like your videos. Hey, thanks, Joe. Man, I you've been around for a long time. I appreciate you too, dude, because you're always leaving comments and, and hanging out and talking and stuff. So Aaron Porter. Yeah, I'm a little scummy. Hopefully I'll change soon. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that, man. Like, I think a lot of men like well, it's there's I've gone through that stage. You know, when you go to a country where it's like a quarter of the price and the women actually want to meet you and they're not like incredibly feminist, westernized, masculine women who wouldn't even look at you, and now you've got status. And now the girls are interested in dating you because you're from another country, you've got more money, whatever, right? And also, drugs are cheap. Alcohol is cheap. You're on vacation. You don't have to go to work tomorrow. It's so tempting to just party, you know, go to the clubs, live it up. And that's rad, man. I've done that all over the world. But I'm in my 40s now, uh, 43 years old. Been there, done that. I'm more on, like, a spiritual journey now, right? And I'm, like, a, a professional dating coach. I'm retiring from that, though. But I've been with so many women, man, like more than I care to count and I've been to way more nightclubs and bars and debaucherous parties and done every drug you can think of and I've done that you know and if that's the stage of life you're going through enjoy it just be careful because dangerous women and dangerous drugs this shit's really fun but it can bite you if you don't use some common sense you wake up one day and you're a drug addict you wake up one day you've been robbed your bank account's empty or you get some chick pregnant or there's all kinds of trouble you can get into if you don't use common sense. 
Uh, oh, you got it from getting robbed in Playa del Carmen. Yeah, I got robbed in Playa del Carmen by the police, the policia. And that video now, man, it's like 10,000 views. And a lot of people watch that video and get terrified. Oh, I'm going to get robbed. No, you're not. probably not going to get robbed. It, and you know, I've traveled all over for 10 years and 21 countries. And I got robbed three times in Mexico. Nowhere else. I love comedy people. Hey, bro, I'm doing great. You guys all want to take a look at the scenery here? How you doing? How you doing? Here's the, the hostel, Selena. They got a pool. They have a swimming pool back there. If you want to stay here, it's it's a little bit expensive for the private rooms, but a dormitory is about 60,000 pesos, which is about 15 US dollars a night. I don't mind dorms. Here's the beach. The waves are kind of big, so it's popular with surfers. But see the palm trees are all trashed. If you look at my last video on Palomino, I tell the story, but this beach used to go out hundreds of meters. But every year it's been creeping closer and closer and closer. And now, now this is all the beach they have left. And they had to build these uh, barriers here, these cement barriers to actually stop the water from eroding right up to the restaurant. Uh, right up to the buildings and in a few years even these buildings might start getting attacked by the rising waters it's also kind of dangerous to swim if you're not a strong swimmer because there's rip tides but the big thing to do in palomino is the river there's a river and people like to go tubing on it so i'm gonna do that pretty soon it's kind of a hippie place a lot of families colombian families come here too but it's more of like a hippie hipster vibe and i like that actually i, I don't mind the hippies What about you guys? Where are you planning to travel this winter? I know it's uh, things are opening up a bit. A lot of countries. I heard Argentina's opening. You still have to get the nose test if you if you're not vaccinated for some of them, but a lot of them are opening up for tourism now. You got a new monitor. Well, how big is it? Are you a gamer? Are you are you just really into movies, or are you trade in Bitcoin or something? Is that why you need a huge monitor? I love comedy people. Morgan Jones, thanks for all the content, man. I'll be there soon myself in Medellin. What's your favorite food so far in Colombia? Oh, man, Colombian food. I don't want to offend anyone, but it's not the best, in my opinion, in Latin America that I've had. I really like Guatemalan food a lot. The Colombian food is very – Medellin food in general is very bland. So you got something called Menu Typico. It's usually like some chicken, a little bit of protein, fish or chicken, some rice or potatoes. Maybe a little bowl of soup, and the soup's pretty good, and corn or something like that. And that's a, maybe a tiny bit of coleslaw. That's really typical food. They don't, they're not very inventive here. I mean, arepas are kind of a delicious treat, but most of the arepas and uh, that you'll find, you know, if you look up arepa, A-R-E-P-A, they're, they're usually Argentinian or Venezuelan style. Colombia is just not a foodie place. I'll let you know. But in most of the cities and towns, you can find international food. And it's cheap, man. That's the best thing is, like, if you want to go, oh, dude, that's awesome. Thanks, Otto. Thanks for the super chat. Have a beer on me. <laughs> you envy the weather. Yeah, well, it's blue right now, but it's been storming every day, man. And the rain is absolutely crazy. I got to get it on video. But when it rains here, the, the streets literally flood up to your ankles and there's no sidewalks so the other day there was like a flash flood down the middle of the main road and i had to walk like half a kilometer in ankle deep water very interesting so right now i'm very very grateful for the weather have a beer on me yeah i will maybe i'll have one right now let's see well let's i'm gonna live stream a beer order i'll show you how my spanish is let's go there's no hotties here today. It's kind of a bummer. Just lots of dogs. I don't mean... I mean actual dogs. Perros. Hola, amigo. Say, hola. <laughs> My life. Quiero uno cerveza, por favor. Uh, ¿Tiene Colombia? Colombia? Sí. 
Nora. Sí. Colombia Nora. Ok. Sí, gracias. How did I do? I can order food, I can ask directions, I can explain basic emotions like ¿Dónde es el baño? I need to take a shit. Where? Where? Okay, so do you guys plan to go anywhere this winter? Or are you going to go to Mexico or Asia or Gracias? This is my favorite brand of uh, beer in Colombia. Uh, Mexico right now is very popular. I might actually go back to Mexico. I'm not sure. I might go to Ecuador. Um, a little while ago, I lost a job. I got offered a $100,000 a year copywriting job. Because I'm actually, YouTube's a hobby, but I'm actually a writer. And I'm a really good writer. Like, I have a lot of writing experience. I've written lots of books and stuff. And so I said, hey, I'm, I'm interested in copywriting. And I got offered a job by a very, very... A successful internet marketer who sells health supplements. He said, I'll train you and everything. So I went to like four weeks of training, three times a week for free. And I learned a lot, honestly. It was, it was He gave me a lot of value, but then he said, okay, you're going to start Monday morning. And I fucked up because I, I thought in my head it was going to be 2, 2 p.m. again. I didn't hear the like Monday morning part. Even though I heard it, it went woo, right through my brain. And so at 10 a.m., he messaged me, sorry, Tony, it's over. I've locked you out of your account. You didn't show up. That's a bad sign for me. I was like, well, fuck. Man. And um, so I got a bit stressed out about money. Like, I'm getting by. I'm doing okay. But I felt sad for a day or two. And then I'm like, you know what? I have no choice. I'm on the other side of the world. I need to make a living. I want to make at least $100,000 a year. So I got on Upwork.com. I started just mess. I made my account and I started just messaging people. You, I'm the best writer you'll ever meet. You, if you don't hire me, you're an idiot. And in one day, I got two jobs with no reviews. And right now, I might actually get a copywriting job with a, a company called Watch Gang. And it's a box. I'm not promoting them. Trust me. But it's it's like a company that sells watches in a box set. So you pay a subscription of like ninety nine dollars or three hundred dollars a month. And you get a random watch, but you could get like a Rolex or some really expensive watch. It's it's a mystery box thing, kind of like Dollar Shave Club. Anyway, I'm writing a I'm writing for them right now for like 40, 40 bucks an hour. And he said I want I want a guy full time, so I'm just waiting. I submitted my copy to him. I'm waiting to hear back from this guy, and I might get a job writing copy about watches. Hey, why not, right? Why the fuck not? Yeah, if I make six figures, it'll be interesting because I won't be sleeping in dormitories. Like, I'm not broke. I've got a significant amount of savings I could live on for almost a year in this place. But I, I'm a very minimalist guy. I don't need a lot. I've never desired to be rich. I used to have an obsession with chasing girls. <laughs> I dedicated a good 10 years of my life to nothing other than hooking up with the most beautiful women that I possibly could. And I actually neglected health, making money, family, friendships to chase this crazy thing. And uh, I've kind of done that. And I had a bit of an identity crisis. And I realized, well, what could I do if I made a lot of money? How would that benefit not only me, but the world? And I started thinking like philanthropy, like, well, I could... I could help the poor people I meet or I could buy more stuff from them. I could help my family. I could, I could do all kinds of things if I made a lot more money. So now I'm focused on that. I'm going to, I'm going to become a great copywriter. One of the best copywriters YouTube. Eventually I might make a hundred thousand dollars a year off YouTube, but I have to crank out a lot of videos and it's hard because I'm working full time at the moment as well. When I'm not, when I'm not creating content, I, uh, or when I'm not working, I'm actually studying right now. I'm reading a book called uh, Writing, Writing Riches by Ray Edwards. It's a really great copywriting book, and I love reading books, guys. I read a, a lot of books, so if you have any questions about books or if you want something like that. I'm also a certified life coach, but this is how I learn shit. I read and I write everything that 
hits me in these books. And when they get full, I send them home. Reading and writing are the two things anyone, you might not be a good read, good writer, you might not like reading, but you're really neglecting like a superpower that could take you all around the world. There's so much demand for writers right now. It's literally a gold rush. If you're a writer, there's no way you could be unemployed. If you're even a, not even a great writer, just a decent writer. I love comedy people. Can I teach? Can you teach me how to be the second best copywriter? Sure, I can. Would you like to live on a beach, date beautiful women, drink the finest cervezas that two dollars and fifty cents can buy? I can help you with that for only seven hundred and ninety-nine dollars a month. Or you can go on Amazon and buy every book on copywriting. Start an account on Upwork.com and start applying for jobs. But yeah, if you have any questions about how to get started in copywriting, being self-employed, making money on the internet, how to meet women, anything like that, I can help you with. No problem for free. All right, let's see what we got here. Courtney McKay, a bruja. Oh yeah, so in Colombia, they have <laughs> they have a creature called bruja. And a bruja is a witch. I've been looking high and low for these goddamn witches, and I haven't found one yet. How's my audio, by the way? Is the wind making a lot of noise? Is it banging on my shirt? I don't have my good microphone with me. Where can you contact me? Oh, you want to talk about copywriting? Sure. Well, here's my email in the chat. TD, TD Newton Publishing at gmail.com yeah and I also have a Instagram account now because sometimes people wanted to contact me and I would get these big walls of text in the chat so my new Instagram is at real Tony's travels so come on guys let me know in the chat are you planning to travel at all this winter and where to? So, Ram Lifers, how much do you deal with healthcare while traveling so much? Language barriers and insurance. Yeah, so I used to pay $100 a month for, was it World Nomads? I can't remember, but it was one of the insurance policies that covered COVID. And because I'm over 40, the premiums went up. So it's like, uh, I paid like 100 Canadian a month, which I thought was a lot. And after seven months of paying that i ran into a bit of a financial situation and i said why am i paying for insurance <laughs> so i don't have insurance don't tell the government of Colombia. knock on wood nothing's happened to me yet but i spent some thousands of dollars on insurance and whenever i've had to go to the hospital the hospital care in most of the world is so cheap compared to canada or the united states or something that i just pay them here's 20 bucks. Thanks for putting me in a cast. Like I just got my teeth done in Mexico. I got two or three cavities filled, cleaned, all this checked x-ray and it cost me $150 Canadian. So you don't, the only time you would need insurance is if you like, I got in a car accident last week and I was like, Oh fuck. Now I wish I was kind of worried. Like, cause I had whiplash. I really hurt my lower back. I was thinking, well, I have bruises, like I still have, uh, they're healing up. But I thought if that was worse, if I really hurt myself, I could have been in trouble without insurance, right? But there's lots of insurance agencies. I mean, it's not a big deal to get insurance if you want to spend that money. What was the other question you had? Language barriers. Um, I knew no Spanish before I came here. So I've been listening to Pimsler, uh, Mikel Thomas. You can Google them and get their audio programs. You just listen to it. I have uh, on a website called udemy.com, U-D-E-M-Y. Loads of courses on Spanish. I got a really great Spanish course, and I'm on level two now. And I've taught myself. And I also went to, uh, I hired, what's it called? Uh, so, but you can hire, if you just Google Spanish lessons online, you can get tutors and I got a tutor for $5 an hour and we had to do one-on-one calls for an hour a day. 
I did 12 hours of that and I can now ask directions and I can order food, but I, the communication, you know what the best thing is, man, your smartphone, it's called Google translate. And if you have data, which is really cheap here, you can just talk into the phone. Like, Hey, how are you? I'm doing well. And it translates. It's like a star Trek thing. It's like, star, it's like star Trek. It's a universal translator and anyone you can just hand it to them and they don't even need to type it. They can literally talk in Spanish. It's a little bit of a drag, but you can get by anywhere in the world with that. Learn how to say, learn your numbers. I have my numbers on the front of my phone as my screensaver. I learned how to speak numbers in a week. It's really easy. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. And then you get up to cien, mil. Mil is a thousand. So uno mil, dos mil. It's not hard. And once you know numbers, how to say, how much is this? Where is this? Where is that? I want this. Do you have that? You're good, man. You're good. Selena, Sam, do I use Selena's co-working spot or do I just work on the laptop and common areas? Is the co-work area worth it? Honestly, I never use the co-work because I'm a writer. I don't need absolute silence or anything. And then I find in co-working spaces, in co-working spaces also, they can be good, but they're expensive. Not for someone who's making like a lot of money, but if you're on a backpacking budget, you don't really need them. I mean, I can work here. Or anywhere. I work at my hostel. I work in my bed quite often. In my dorm beds. like, uh, Or if I rent an Airbnb, I work there. I work everywhere that I can. It doesn't matter to me. Co-working spaces are great if you want to meet other people who work online. Sometimes. Sometimes they don't feel like talking, but you can make conversations with people. It's a good way to find clients, to find opportunities. Be around other like-minded people. I've never used the one at Selena, though. Aruba. I've never, Chef Stan, I've never been to Aruba. Yeah, the rock at Guatape, it was pretty fun. I mean, it's an easy thing to do. It takes you like 10 minutes and it's a nice view and it's a big party at the top. I liked it. I have a video on that. If you look up my video, the penis rock of Colombia or the, the penis rock of Guatape. <laughs> You're not traveling this winter, but you want to go to Guatemala in the future. Chef Stan's coming to visit. Well, yeah, let me know if you're in town. I don't know where I'll be. I might be in Ecuador by then. I'm not sure. You're Otto Croft. You're hoping to be in Medellin in December. You're fluent in Spanish and your wife is from Medellin. So it's easy. Yeah, well, you're set, man. You got to... Oh, my connection is unstable. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, so, but I still want to check out the other cities. I checked out Santa Marta. You see my video of Santa Marta. Don't have a lot to say about it. It's fine for a couple of days. I would not want to live there. The beach is shut down right now for construction or something. It was kind of boring. But the coastline here up in the north is really fun. I want to go do the desert thing. There's a place called Guadahira. And you go out in a 4x4 four four into the desert, like pure like Arabian-style sands pristine beaches and it costs uh i don't know a hundred dollars or something to go out there and spend the night i want to go to tyrona park spend the night in there and some other stuff some some adventurous nature shit <laughs> no bruja cast a spell on me i will defeat their spell with my gringo canadian powers my rent in Medellin, I've not spent more than 250 US a month on rent. And I lived in a big house with a bunch of other people, but it was a massive casa in Medellin. My hostels, I usually spend 10 to $12 a night. And I don't mind. I might upgrade because I'm getting a new job and I'll make more money, and, but I don't mind at all sleeping in dormitories. I know some people hate it, but whatever. 300, $300 a month. I usually don't spend more than about 700 a month in general us in med in colombia but i'm not doing all the tours and excursions and everything i'm doing a lot but i'm not like renting jet skis or you know doing the really expensive activities all the time food is cheap rent is cheap life is cheap guys so my uh, battery is about to die i didn't bring my charger unfortunately Thanks a lot for hanging out and 
my next video, I think I'm going to try to get tubing. I just want to find some girls to come, you know. And if I'm going to be tubing on a river, making a video, I better have some bonita mujer, mujeres, rather than some dudes. Yeah, so when I get more uh, electricity, I'll do another live stream in the future. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Adios.